The regulations have been changed to uh, reduce the effect of exhaust, and where you put the exhaust is now controlled. So the um, the usage of the exhaust to enhance the underbody flow is much much reduced, and uh, the exhaust will still have an effect, but it's uh, uh, it's much much reduced. There's been um, a move to lower the front of the nose, which has caused these uh, step noses, which are very prevalent. Um, and that's been done to reduce the height of the impact if one car uh, hits another. So uh, I think it's a good objective. We've got to look at uh, perhaps improving the aesthetics uh, for the future. Um, and a much tighter control on the engine mapping you can have to reduce the, uh, uh, the efficiency of the exhaust mode. So um, those are the major changes that we're facing this year. Well, it was a fascinating area the use of exhaust energy and um, as always the cars have, have, you know, the exhaust have been there, they had to have been there for forever so we just didn't appreciate the, the benefits that could come from it and um, placing the exhaust in, a, in a, a really strategic and beneficial place but more importantly then understanding how we could use the engine to pr provide a constant thrust of the exhaust so you know, even when we were off the throttle, we were providing thrust uh, to the exhaust. So there was no power being generated by the engine, but we were getting the exhaust gas um, passing through. So as always in Formula One, we grab hold of a concept and we exploit it to beyond this maximum. And um, it was interesting and, and, and opened up a whole new uh, area of understanding we had to have, both aerodynamic and engine. And as, as one team, as Mercedes, we had that benefit of being an engine um, manufacturing designer and a chassis manufacturing designer so that enabled us to bring um, both those strengths together to get the most from it. Well we've um, we're still getting a bit of performance from the exhaust with the new car nothing like was uh, achieved with the uh, last year's regulations and last year's concept but there's uh, once you learn something once you discover something you don't uninvent un it so all of the engineers all of the designers in Formula 1 have been looking at how they can still retain some of the performance, but it's far, far reduced uh, to what we had last year. And um, I think most people in designing their new cars would be quite happy if they were able to achieve the overall performance that they achieved last year. We, we were testing in Areth with the 2011 car and it, it looked to be the most consistent and fastest car there in 2011 specs. All the new 2012 cars were a bit behind that. So I think anyone who's, who's doing their new 2012 car is able to get close to what they achieved in 2011 is doing a very good job. Well, the high chassis and high noses evolved to get the air under the car um, and to improve the flow in what we call the keel area and out into the side pods and under the car. So you know, we don't want to put the chassis higher because, of course, it's weight up high. There's no advantage to that, but we put it up high for aerodynamic reasons. So when the nose was brought down low, we wanted to try and see how we could retain some of the advantage that we had with the high chassis. And that's why you've seen these step noses, because the, the height of the nose is constrained up to a certain point, and the chassis is constrained after that, and the dimensions are different. Um, it was the, this uh, extra height for the chassis was retained because there were a few teams who said, maybe we want to carry on with our 2011 chassis. And... Uh, because we want to carry on with a 2011 chassis, we want to be able to match the new nose up to it. So the FIA agreed, at least for now, to let that pass. But I think, uh, I doubt, quite frankly, whether there's going to be many people who have carried over their chassis from last year. So uh, I think it may be a detail that will improve in the future.